Welcome back to Cottage Designs by Erin, where today we are working on a special quilt made strictly out of vintage handkerchiefs. If you notice on my design wall behind me, I have some beautiful butterflies folded, and I'm going to be showing you this technique today. I've always wanted to make a handkerchief butterfly quilt, and so now is the time. I'm going to move the camera to my hands now so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so on my sewing table, I have a stack of handkerchiefs. I just bought 12 handkerchiefs off of eBay, and I should have known better. It said they were new, but I just thought, I didn't realize that meant they were new, new. These are new made in China handkerchiefs, okay? They're very pretty, but they kind of lack that vintage appeal. Okay, so you're going to open your handkerchief, and you're going to fold it diagonally, like so. I'm going to try to get the edges covered as much as possible here. We'll get them to line up, I'm saying. Okay, and then you are going to... I did my bad side first. I think better on my right side, but my left side I have trouble with. So you're going... I'm going to fold the left side first. You just fold a little tuck under. And pin it. And then now we're going to fold the tuck under on the right side. Now you're asking, how do we know how big the tuck has to be? I will show you in one second, okay? So that looks about right. So here's our first butterfly. The bottom edge of the butterfly is going to be roughly two inches. Okay, this one's two and a half, so I could probably fold it in a little tighter there. And then you would press this and then sew it onto a background square. All right, so let's practice with, these handkerchiefs have not been washed. These are the new stiff ones. Let's try this with an old one that has been washed. Of course, some of these are all different sizes, so I don't know about that. Oh, here's a pretty one with a scalloped edge. Okay, so this, and this has a different body. This is very, very soft because it's been used and it's been washed. Again, I would recommend Molly Suds to wash it in. So now we're going to fold it again in half. Oh, look how beautiful. And then you're going to make a little tuck. Of course, you will press this before you actually work with it on the background. And then we're going to make a tuck on the other side. Oh, so beautiful. Look at this, so then the bottom looks like this. Isn't that amazing? And I would even say, for one that's this soft, it'd probably be a good idea to starch it. I love starch. Starch is our friend when we're quilting. And then I'm just going to, because it is so soft, I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in the top. All right, so now we have several butterflies made. Here's this one. Look how beautiful. This one. We've got this blue one made. Okay. So I'm, I, they whip up really easy. So then you're going to take a 12 and a half inch background square. If you don't have an Omni Grid, here's a 12 and a half inch Omni Grid background square. If you don't have one, cut a piece of cardboard, poster board, newspaper, cereal box, whatever you have that you can cut into a 12 and a half inch square. So here's my background fabric. Um, you could use any color you want. I have an overabundance of this lavender fabric. I'm talking yards and yards and yards. So I'm going to use this for my butterflies. So let me grab... take this one off the design wall so you're going to put your butterflies down at an angle and we, we don't we need to move it in a little more here you want to make sure that the wings are not caught in the seam allowance if they are go ahead and fold it in a little bit more
There we go. Now I've got it out of the way. Okay, now you have some options here. You can buttonhole stitch around all this, or you can sew it with a sewing machine. I am going to opt for the sewing machine because it'll go much faster that way. Okay, so here's our block. Now, let me see, I actually have white thread in, so that'll work perfectly. It's a beautiful spring project. I have a new granddaughter. She is eight months old, and her name is Grace Josephine. And I thought this would be ideal for her, a beautiful quilt. All right, so I'm going to uh, just put this on a straight stitch. Look, I need some more pins. going straight down the scalloped edge. This is so pretty, I wouldn't mind myself having a quilt made out of this. Very feminine. Very shabby chic. Okay, and then I'm going to slightly turn and go up the other side. Let me pull that out just a little bit so I can get it somewhat even as the other side. This would be very thick, but it actually is pretty thick. It's a great way to use sentimental handkerchiefs. Okay, I'm going to turn it and go the other direction. Goodness, I've got a big bunch of thread balling up on the back here like crazy. I don't know why that's happening. Okay, then I want to go ahead. I got in the seam allowance by just a little bit, but not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch down my pleats so that if it's washed, they, the pleats won't fall out. You could overcast stitch this too if you wanted to zigzag it.
Now I'm going to tell you, this is heavier than it looks. So your background fabric can't be flimsy and not definitely not muslin or something lightweight like that, because this is going to have to hold all that. going to take our pins out and this would be our first block now some people sew a little button on up here and they make like the head of the butterfly I'm not too crazy about that look I just like the old-fashioned um, ones the way they are so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take pencil and you're going to lightly draw the antenna on and then you hand embroider that okay let's see how long did I make these antenna I made them two inches long it just happened out that way because I've never tried that before so let me get some black thread and I'll show you how to do that. Hold on one second. So then we get the embroidery floss, elbows length, divide it into three strands, get your needle, embroidery needles. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in the bottom. Now, I looked this up on Pinterest, and there's a tutorial on there how to do this. There are also pictures of quilts. The one that I was interested in used 12 handkerchiefs, set three blocks apart, three blocks across, I'm sorry, and they were sashed with what looked to be maybe two-inch sashing strips okay so then you're going to start down here at the bottom of your antenna and then you're just going to make little teeny tiny stitches i'm going to do a back stitch you could do a stem stitch you could do whatever you want back stitch is fast Not very if you stick your finger though. And it's called a back stitch because the stitches are always going back towards you. Okay, and then you just keep going like that until you get the entire thing done. All right, so just it's boring to watch that, so we're not gonna watch all that. But anyway, this would be our first block. Of course, it needs to be pressed, it needs to be starched. And then some people have them go in every different direction. You could have them flying, you know, all different directions. How you set the quilt is totally up to you. 
but this is a fun project and it goes together just so quick. So let me show you again on a handkerchief. Here's a beautiful black one. I love black handkerchiefs with roses. That's to die for. Okay, so you're going to fold it in half and you want the edges to meet. Of course, you would press it. Okay. And then I'm going to do the left side first because that's the side I'm not good at. Go ahead and make a tuck. This, might, this one's probably too big for that size block. Probably needs to be smaller. And then make a tuck on the other side. And the goal is for it to be two inches wide at the bottom. At the widest part. Two inches wide at the widest part. So there's one. Okay. That's going to be too big for our blocks. Let me go back to these. Let me see how... Let me see how big this actual handkerchief is. It is almost 12 inches exactly. So we're going to fold it in half again. I like these with the scallop edge because I think they make the prettiest butterflies. You would press it. I'm not pressing it because my um, ironing board's way across the room. Pin it on the tuck to hold it in place. And then now make a tuck on the opposite side. This would be a fun project to make with children too. It's because it's like origami. Okay, so there is the butterfly. And let, this will have no problem fitting on the 12 and a half inch block because guess what size the other one was. So here's our block. I'm going to want it to go on here and then stitch it all down and then put on the antenna. So I hope you learned something today. This is such a wonderful, wonderful way to save sentimental handkerchiefs that we've had around probably forever, you know, that belong to aunts and grandmas and so on and so forth. So if you like my video, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it and stop back by for more. Thank you. I wanted to give a little update on the quilt because this was filmed at two different times. This is the first row of the quilt and I wanted to say that I changed my mind when sewing the um, butterflies down. I did go ahead and zigzag stitch the butterflies to the background square because I noticed that they shifted a little bit and so I decided I would feel better if they were more secure so I did zigzag them. Let me show you the blocks again. This is what I have done so far. This is going to be a twin size for Grace Josephine and I hope you've enjoyed this project. It's very, very beautiful and it goes together fairly fast. Please subscribe to my channel and stop back by for more ideas. Thank you.